All right, today we've got a good old fashioned middleweight top contender title fight between two of the best backpack options for single bag travel. And if you're gonna go for longer than just the weekend. On one hand, we have the Evergood CTB 35. and the other hand, we have the GORUCK 34 liter GR2 Heritage and Slate, super cool. So we've got very identical, very similar, near identical loadouts of a various range of packing cubes and tech pouches and other things that I would typically take with me on a longer than a weekend trip. We're gonna pack each one out to see how they do, help you decide which one might be the best for you. Let's get to the pack outs. In front of me are identical loadouts of a range of packing cubes. We're gonna put them in both. Just to be fair, this is a general loadout. I haven't exactly packed this out recently in the GR2 or the CTB35. So I'm kind of excited to see how this shapes up. I've got some experience with a 26 liter size of this bag, not really in the 35 liter. And again, when you step up to the 35 liter, what you get is this back panel with that aluminum preset curve in it. And that's what makes this thing awesome. I have a MPL 30, which has the same thing. And that's why I got the CTP 35, just so we could load it out. So I figured why not pack it out in two of my favorite bags, the CTP 35, which I'm sure is gonna be a favorite and the already king of the heap. This is the GORUCK GR2. You've seen me kick this one around a bit and it's survived and is still awesome. Let's get to pack out. First of all, what do we have? We have a Peak Design Packing Cube, medium and small. We've got the Cap One from Every Goods, a pair of sunglasses, playing cards, and a pocket knife. Happens to be from the James brand. And then on the other side, we also have the Packing Cube from each company. So I'm gonna pack the Ever Goods eight liter in the Ever Goods bag and the 10 liter GORUCK one in the GORUCK bag. That's really the only volume difference here. We've got a GR1 sized field pocket and a garage built gear mighty pouch also gonna go in there. We also have laptops, we've got iPads, both in the similar size, 13 inch ish size. We got water bottles. We kind of know how this is gonna shake out, but we got them nonetheless. And a pair of running shoes, because if I'm gonna go more than a weekend, probably taking a second pair of shoes, at least a pair of running shoes. So, Let's pack it out. So it probably comes as no surprise that both of these bags packed expertly for the same things that I laid out there. So really nothing left on the table that I couldn't fit in either one. I even got a water bottle in here. Um, so let's just talk about some of the differences and how they packed out and maybe talk about a little extra capacity that we have in each bag. So externally, I'm gonna say that both of these work out really well. They're gonna be really comfortable on your back, just based off of how each of these bags is designed. You've got the typical Evergoods shoulder strap system and a luggage pass-through, aka handle, and then you have this very comfortable back panel uh, on the back. Now you also have a hip belt, which is wedged in there and very, very comfortable if you need it. It's also included and it's in there, sort of out of the way. The back panel over here is also very comfortable, typical GORUCK, very thick padded straps. This one, because it's the heritage, doesn't have additional ways to put a sternum strap on here, sternum strap included on the CTB35. You can also do a hydration method on here. You can put a hydration bladder on the inside and then route the tube to the outside like most of the Evergoods bags. Probably wouldn't do it with this one in that size. That's just me. External water bottles are really kind of the big differentiator in terms of just on the go utility because you can access your laptop on both these bags. On the CTB35, you can access it through the side opening here and there's you know multiple level levels in there and so it's just really nice and cool over here it's a little tougher but you, you can get to my laptop in the back i just have a 13 inch macbook pro in the back so there you go access on the go is pretty awesome for at least the main part of your tech now the utility of that quick access sunglasses pouch maybe your airpods both of them you know this one has the yoke pocket which is accessible back here that's where i put the sunglasses that's where i would put my airpods 
And this is where there's a key loop as well. So there you go, CTB35, external on the go. On the Heritage Edition GR2s, just, you know, just get, I'm still gonna fall. On Heritage Edition GR2s, we get this top access pocket, which is, that's where I put the sunglasses on this side. That's where I typically keep my AirPods over here. So there you go, kind of a draw, just where they are and how they're accessed. You, know, you can't put a hydration bladder in this one just because of that top pocket eliminates the ability to do that. Other things, and this is where we get to what didn't I put in here? Well, I didn't have my iPad mini out today, but the CTB35 has this front pocket which goes all the way to the top and down to about here. You could put a pair of headphones in here. You can put your, this is where I put my iPad mini and maybe my phone uh, on the go. Over here, I didn't put anything in the slash pocket on the front. And what people mostly complain about is how, you know, how tight this pocket is when it's packed out pretty much for an iPad, maybe a Kindle, that kind of thing on the inside of this one is pretty much all you're gonna get in the slash pocket when it's completely packed out. Water bottles, again, I could put, take another water bottle on this side, uh, I just have one. You could put a tripod in there maybe, but there's no way to control it or secure it on the top. So let's just take out the water bottle over here. Where did I put the water bottle on this side? Well, when we get into this main compartment, how you pack it really kind of dictates how you do things. But because I packed out both with the same amount of stuff, I actually had extra room on the inside. So we'll kind of undo this here to show you that I put both the GR1 field pocket and then I had a room in here for a water bottle. And as long as it's a double walled kind of thing, like this GORUCK one, this, then it would be fine. 18 ounce Yeti, same thing. You can put something in here, it's not gonna sweat all over your stuff. It's just you gotta unzip the bag to get it out. Not a big deal, but it's also more streamlined. You don't have the stuff sticking out like you do on these types of bags from Evergoods. So that's how that worked out. Where's the other stuff? Well, because of this internal pocket in the GR2, this is where I put that cap one. So cap one lived in there. We got the field pocket, we got the water bottle, and the internal pocket in the front, this is where I put, I was able to put the garage built gear, and I also had the backpack of cards, and pocket knife. Just, you know, if you're going to the airport, make sure you take out all your pocket knives. So you got that stuff all in the front. Now, the one thing to be aware of is you could maybe pack this out a little tighter. As I've said in other videos, it, it eliminates the ability to fully pack out this top pocket because you're competing for the same internal avalanche. You're competing for the same internal space for this pocket and whatever you put in here. But the cap one, uh, you can still pretty much load out this internal pocket in the front with this totally stuffed garage built gear pouch on the front and kind of readjust, readjust some stuff. It makes this thing fully kind of packed out and we're still with the cap one enough to do the zipper. With just this level of pack out, I did not pack out this, this mesh pocket on the inside or the mesh pockets that are on the inside here. So that's how, you know, it's, that comes down to packing philosophy. If you're a packing cube kind of person, you're gonna put stuff in there like that so you can be, can be removed. You may just eliminate these things and pack whatever you had in here in these little pockets just to keep everything sort of internally segmented. It's just a packing philosophy thing. I prefer the packing cube method. Main compartment, as we get into this, we'll see that really, and we'll have to lay this sucker down for the GR2. If we fold this sucker back, this is how everything sort of aligns. And we'll get out the, the CTB in a second to kind of show you side by side. But we had enough room to jam in this medium size, small size Peak Design, and then the GORUCK 10 liter packing cube and we had both running shoes in the bottom. They're actually hiking shoes, these are the limbs. Still a little bit of room in there, so you could jam some other smaller items in there. I also did not utilize the mesh pockets on the inside of the GR2, that's just me. So that's the inside. I also didn't put anything in that back stretchy pocket. We'll come back to this in a second to show you side by side. How did this one pack out? Well, a couple things. We've got this front pocket here, accessible from the side. This one fits 
a cap one on this one pretty perfectly. And there's, again, I didn't utilize the internal mesh zip pocket or the sleeve on the top, but I did you totally use, utilize this internal space. In fact, there's a lot more room in this one because this thing fits perfectly in a CTB 26. So it swallows up in the 35 and you can fit, fit more stuff for sure in this one. Again, didn't even use this pocket, iPad mini, would typically go in there. Now, there isn't another layer like we had in this GR2, but let's just open up and take a look briefly how this one is packed out. Geometry being a little differently, fits a lot more stuff because it's a much bigger compartment. Now we have things, and again, I'll get the other one out side by side so we can see how these fit. I had to put the field pocket, the GR1 size field pocket in here next to the medium size packing cube. I also was able to fit the small size packing cube. I was able to sit the medium back here and the eight liter packing cube from Evergoods inside with the running shoes, sort of one on the bottom, one on the side, just the way this one fit geometrically. So that's how those things fit. I did not utilize the mesh pocket on the inside. Again, you can detonate some of this stuff, put it in here so you could have it on the go. There's tons of dimension already allotted for this. You can see it's sort of bunched up, just waiting for you to pack that sucker out. This top pocket is where I put the same thing like we did on the GR2, the garage built gear, mighty pouch, a deck of cards, and a pocket knife, because I'm not going to the airport. And so you can put those things back in there and they fit in there perfectly. So let's go side by side on this main compartment just so we can see how they shaped up. All right, so side by side, this is how they kind of looked. And just a much bigger single compartment on the CTB35 compared to the GR2 because we have that extra compartment there. So just, a, it just geometrically how it fit, there's just a lot more room, which was good to put more stuff in here compared to what we had in the GR2. So that's it, side by side, what we think. I don't know, it just depends on how you want to pack. To be honest, I probably could have packed another thin layer, maybe a jacket on the GR2 and probably do, uh, could have done the same thing on the CTB35. That's a real quick pack out for both these bags in an identical configuration. And again, you have a little bit extra room to put some other stuff. So I didn't fully max it out. Maybe I used 32 and a half liters of things and you have more capacity in here for other stuff. So that's it. This is how they compare a GR2 style to the CTB35. More external pockets all over the CTB35. One bigger front compartment on the GR2. Now you've got top pockets on a heritage. That kind of makes this thing even on the go to access your stuff. That's how these two pack out. Just wanted to give you kind of an overview of how both these packed out. Let me know if you want a specific breakdown of the CTB35. I kind of showed you all the highlights and this is not a new bag. I like this one for the bigger capacity. Which one would I choose if I needed to go out beyond the weekend? You know, it's really hard for me to say no to Heritage GR2 34 liter. I got the CTB because I wanted to really give it a run for its money. Now I do think that this back panel and integrated hip belt are gonna be a difference maker for me personally. You can, if you had a regular GR2, with the webbing on the front and the sides, put a hip belt on one of those. And so you can do that, but it wouldn't be able to be concealed like you have on the back panel on the CTB35. That's just me. So if you like this video, you like these sort of comparison style videos, leave me a comment down below. Love to hear what you think about either the CTB35 or the GR2. And I both, I think they're both great bags. I do think that it comes down to more about how you pack and personal preference personally between both these bags. I don't think you get a ton more volume in one versus the other. It doesn't feel that way for me. Um, maybe a slight comfort edge on the Evergoods and the ability to have that integrated hip belt over here, external water bottles. If that's your jam, you might like this one. You can carry two. Nothing externally on, a, on any of the GORUCK bags for the most part, unless you go with the M22 that they make, but it's not in this size or capacity. That's it. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, 
we'll see you in the next video. There's a lot more going on to come out soon, but I thought this would be a fun comparison between two of the best middle sized backpacks for single bag options. Some of my favorite ones that I've seen recently. See you in the next video. Today we have a good... <clears throat>